Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and welcome to week four of my 12 Weeks of Christmas series. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to start with a 3D embossing folder. I chose the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Snowflakes, but you could literally use any embossing folder you wanted for this. This is just kind of the one I chose because I wanted more snowflakes. Hopefully you guys aren't snowflaked out because of course if you saw the thumbnail this is another snowflake card. I just I love snowflakes so much. It's so I don't know. It's just one of those shapes. It's kind of like butterflies for me, I guess, that I just, I come up with so many different fun ideas with them and then I keep doing it. You know, I keep coming up with more ideas. There will be other things in this series, I promise, but right now we're still doing snowflakes. So bear with me. So I did run this through my switch, which I have off to the side. And I do have to kind of play with my sandwich for 3D embossing folders because each one is slightly different. So I have to kind of figure out my sandwich for that. So that's why you would have seen my plates change. And now this step is completely up to you. You could leave them white on white if that's what you wanted. I chose to add a little color to them. So I brought in shaded lilac, sponge sugar, and tumbled glass. And I'm just lightly adding that on top of the panel to bring out that 3D embossing pattern. Um, it is a little bit of a messy look, but I kind of wanted that. So... That is what I was going for. If you wanted a more smooth look, you could maybe use a brayer or um, do it on the folder and then run the folder through with the ink already on it. That's another way to have a, a slightly cleaner look uh, or leave it white on white and that can be really pretty too. But I wanted to pop a color on these, so I did lean towards this. But if this isn't your style because it's a little bit messy, no problem. Just don't <laughs> do the ink to paper like I just did. And then I am gonna cut out some holographic cardstock. I'm cutting this into quarter inch strips and I need 12 because I am making six cards. These cards are for a friend of mine. She asked me to make her six Christmas cards. Uh, so this set is for her. And this is just the idea I came up with. She's always so great because she lets me have creative freedom on the cards that I make for her. So it's always a lot of fun to kind of sit down and create these cards for her. So this is my third year making Christmas cards for her, which is always really, really fun. So I am going to cut these oh, down on an angle. And again, if you guys have been with me for a minute, you know that I'm really bad about measuring things. I didn't measure nothing. I just aimed for what I thought looked good and, and cut it. <laughs> you could measure, if you measured, this would probably be simpler, um, but I did not. So I am just lining it up. I cut the first one the way I liked it, and then I'm going to line up every other panel um, the same way to get the same cuts because I want the same look in the end. I just want there to be different colors. So Again, if you had measured this, it probably would have been an easier way to do it than what I'm doing. But I tend to just fly by the seat of my pants. You know, I have an idea in my head and I, I don't aim for perfection. I just, I aim for cards that make me happy, that make me smile, that I enjoy making. So I'm never really concerned about whether or not they're perfect. Uh, and I mean, we're handmade here, so they're not going to be perfect regardless, which I mean, I wouldn't aim for perfection regardless, but I do, you know, if you had measured these and kind of had an idea of where you wanted to cut them, even though cutting on a, an angle can be a little bit difficult, which is why I just cut the first one to where I was happy. And then every other panel, I just kind of line up with the pink one and then cut from there. But but completely up to you. Do this in whatever, you know, style works for you. And again, as I've said on all of my other Christmas videos so far this this series if you don't like the color palette I've chosen no problem don't use pink purple and blue use green red and you know I don't even know what other color would you would pull in there but um, maybe metallic you don't have to use the color palette that I'm using so don't let that stop you if you're like this is a cool idea but I don't like that color palette no problem switch up the color palette you know make it your own so just take something that you like out of these ideas and run with it. You know, maybe you want to use a pattern paper instead of creating one. Use little slivers of, you know, your scraps that you have left and create this card with that way instead of using an inked little panel in the center. You know, like there's so many things you could do here if this doesn't fit your exact um, idea. Or if you love this idea, bust this out. These are easily recreatable cards. 
Um, and you could do these in like such an array of colors if you wanted to. So completely up to you. I just try to give you ideas that then you can run with and make your own however you want to. So I do have the strips that I'm adding here now, and I am actually working on the base of the card. Generally, I don't do that. Generally, I prefer to work on the panel, like a panel, but I don't, don't ask me why. I just opted to work on the base of the card here. So if you wanted to, you could, you know, have worked on a panel and added a mat. For once, I didn't do that because if you're, you know, here a lot on my channel you know that I love to black matte everything because I think the colors really pop but this is kind of a clean and simple card with a little bit of of messy inking you know and it's just kind of I don't know that juxtaposition just I love it so do what makes you happy that's always kind of what I aim for when I'm making projects and these just they made me smile while I was making them and I had a lot of fun so that's really all that matters I did bring in my trimmer just to make sure I got them cut nicely to the angle that my card base is on and that first one I cut without flipping it so that it it curled a little bit so on this one I actually flipped it over so I'm cutting the back of the holographic cardstock so that it's it's lined up to my card base but yeah, I think that these turned out pretty phenomenal. Do you guys have a, a favorite of my 12 Weeks of Christmas series so far? I know we're only on week four, but I do think that so far the four cards that I've made, like the four uh, videos, are really pretty. So I would love to know if you guys have a favorite. I don't know if I could choose, although I am pretty partial to that tree card I did last week, <laughs> like last Monday. I am pretty partial to that one. It turned out really pretty, but I don't tend to make things I'm not happy with, so I'm probably a little biased there, but I do really enjoy them. So then for my kind of focal on this card, I brought out more of my holographic cardstock. I bought this pack of holographic cardstock from Michaels, like, I don't even know, two years ago? I don't know. I've had this for a long time, and it has like 50 sheets in it. So I have a lot of holographic cardstock. So I know a lot of people will comment about using things or wasting things or, you know, you do you, you know, you have to do what works for you. You have to do what works in your budget. I can stand to waste a little bit of the cardstock, honestly, because I have so much of it and I use it so rarely, um, but completely up to you. Use, you know, as much or as little as you would like to use. So I did cut out the star or the snowflake. I cut out a little piece of the holographic cardstock for it. And then I'm going to die cut that star. I keep on a couple. I keep wanting to call it a star. It's a snowflake. I it's from the Tim Holtz Vault Winter Wishes die set. It's that kind of newer one that he re like brought out in that vault set, and it's just really pretty. I used it in a card, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and it just I I love the snowflake. It's just such a great snowflake, and so I've been having a lot of fun using it. So I did die cut that out six times from that holographic cardstock. And then I'm going to bring in, I honestly, I don't think you can get this one anymore. It's the Tim Holtz 3D Impresslets Snowflake and it cuts out two, so it cuts and like embosses at the same time. I, I don't think it's even available anymore, to be honest with you. Maybe you can find it, you know, maybe amazon or ebay or i will i'll try to link it if i can but i know that he said a while ago his impresslets were discontinued so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to find it but any snowflake that you have that's smaller than this big guy use it uh, hopefully you have some snowflakes in your stash you know if you're anything like me you probably have six million of them but i you know i i love this snowflake that he did here and so I wanted to use the little one and I did cut this a few times just to get my um, sandwich correct <laughs> because again like I said um, depending on which embossing folder I bring in it depends on which sandwich I need and it changes based on which company made the embossing folder so I did have to kind of get an idea of that before I started cutting them all. So I'm just going to cut the small one on the bottom. This impresslet actually cuts two, a larger snowflake and a smaller snowflake, but I want the small snowflake because I want the little one to go in front of the other snowflake that I've already cut. This isn't a necessary step. If you don't want two snowflakes to kind of fluff up your, you know, snowflake that's going to go on the front, then just do the first one. You don't have to have multiple snowflakes. I just, 
love how it looks. So that is the direction that I end up going. But there's no wrong way to create. There's no police that are going to come to your house and tell you that you're, you know, doing it wrong. So as long as you are enjoying what you're making and you are happy, that's all that matters. So please keep that in mind. I do often have people come and tell me I'm using too much of something or, you know, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have done this. And I, I'm always welcome to people's opinions, but it's unlikely that I'm going to change how I'm making things because it works for me. And that's kind of the idea, right? So, I mean, if you ever have constructive criticism that you want to give me, go for it. Uh, but, you know, it's it's up to the person as to whether or not you want to take it with a grain of salt or just be happy with what you're creating. So completely up to you. Make sure that you're happy as you're creating. And it's kind of funny. I feel a need to say that. I just, I don't want people to not create because they think someone else is going to come and criticize their stuff. Although, if you're going to share it on the internet, just be aware that not everybody's going to have nice things to say, you know? So as long as you are happy, that is all that matters. You can show me your creation and I will be happy with you. Uh, if you ever want to, I have a Facebook group. I have a business page that I share on. And then I have an actual like Facebook group. If you want to come and join, it's just a bunch of really lovely ladies that we just hang out and we share stuff with each other. Sometimes we share, you know, animal photos. Sometimes we share recipes. Sometimes we share just, you know, fun crafty goodies that are coming on the market, that kind of stuff. So if you're at all interested, it is CRT Designs is the name of the Facebook group. You do have to request to join because I like to make sure that nobody's trying to come in and spam or be weird so you do have to request to join you have to answer two questions uh, and then yeah you can come and hang out and you can show me what you're working on if you want to because I am just happy you're creating so if you have no one else to share with and you want to share something come share it with me and and the ladies in the group they're all very very lovely I don't believe there's any gentlemen in the group though gentlemen are welcome um, but I think it's just a big group of ladies at the moment and it's only got like 50 people in it because we just we hang out it's my ladies from the lives they are phenomenal women. They just come in there just so supportive and so considerate and kind. So if you want just to come share some some fun stuff you're making, please do come hang out by all means. So that is kind of what I'm doing here. I did bring in a Merry Christmas stamp you saw. I had to cut a little of that footage out because my head got in the way as I was lining it up with the strip, but I think that it turned out really pretty. And then I did adhere everything down. I did have to bring in a few more pearls because if you guys know, I'm a more is more style creator. So I actually had a hard time creating these because they're a little bit more clean and simple and mist is sitting beside me to the left right now on the screen i had to stop her because she kept trying to steal the pearls off of the <laughs> card you see her foot just went in and tried to steal pearls off that card so i had to set her on the ground because sadly i'm running out of these pearls and the company that i bought them for i th i don't think is doing well i i honestly i don't i don't think that i'll be surprised if i hear they're going out of business which makes me incredibly sad so I have to, you know, source some more pearls so that I can kind of, you know, see what I can do. But, but yeah, so uh, there's nothing, you know, worse than running out of your favorite embellishments. But she kept trying to steal them. So that's like the first time I think I've ever set her down on the ground while creating. But I didn't want her to steal a pearl and then have like one card not have the right amount. So she came back up on the desk right after that. It's just she, yeah, she got pretty upset with me when I set her down for a second. So I'm going to hold up all the cards so you guys can look at them and just enjoy them in all of their glory. And as I said, if you don't like that kind of messy, inky piece in the background, replace it with a patterned paper. Replace it with a piece of vellum that's embossed. That could be beautiful. Replace it. You know, there's so many things you could do if this isn't 100% to your style. So please make it your own and enjoy it and just take away whatever you learned from this card if you learned anything. So that's what I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed these cards. I think they're stunning. I cannot wait for my friend to see them. I'm so excited to see what she thinks. Uh, yeah, and that's what I have. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you leave me a like, leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and we are doing a live stream this Thursday where I will be making all sorts of sized envelopes. So come and join me for that. So leave me, ooh, I don't even know. Leave me a Christmas ornament in the comments if you made it all the way through this video. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.